Hello there, my name is Lanius and as you might tell I kind of switch things around a little. I didn't want to use camera anymore, which was mainly an annoyance and wasn't even looking that good so for some damn reason I decided to use Grim Reaper with basically pretty in the last moment I decided to at least maybe be a little more serious so gameplay footage it is previous video was re-edited in the last moment but but let's get to the point so co-pilot code stealing AI from Microsoft's github spanning many controversies universally not really liked among free and open source software community well might be fair but subject of this video is whether it is actually useful and if yes then how so first of all a pilot won't replace you still need to code you still need to know what the code you're pushing is and what it does at first copilot might might even slow you down as it might be annoying but when you get used to it it really can help you code faster although just talking about it is not very productive so let me show you some examples i know you'd probably prefer me to show you some react code or whatnot but we're going with uh, but we're going with what I actually used Copilot for, so as close to a real life example as we can get. With the context for people that don't understand what's happening. I have a Magento 2 application here. Uh, for simplicity, let's think about that as a framework. And I will create a module. At least the module directory. At first, and yeah, so now we need to create some files required for Magento to recognize my module and maybe create some class. So let's create like the config directory which is etc of course i'm explaining this but it's not really important how magento works or whatever because i just want to show you some practical examples so to for a module to actually be recognized other than just you know the directory that we have here it requires a XML configuration file <coughs> which we will create and normally you would just need to basically like copy paste change or or I don't maybe remember because it's not really that complicated but it also uh, requires some schema uh, stuff that you're probably not going to remember so now I'm 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 gonna use Copilot to generate the file for me. So let's Control I in VS Code and I type Magento to module XML and let's see. <coughs> and here we go. I accept because it created exactly what what I wanted. It also you know. Sequence is like for some dependencies, but we don't be needing this. So let's do it like that. And we have the configuration XML just like that. So another required file will be registration PHP. So let's create it. Let's tell Copilot to 
greatly. Uh, Magento registration file. Magento 2, but I guess it will know, but it sometimes gets stupid. So, here it is. And as you can see, or not if you don't know PHP, this is one of the errors it always makes. So, this should be at the top and the use uh, fragments should be below. I guess maybe it does something like uh, it, it, it is basically an import if you like from JS or, or, or whatever other language. Yeah, so here you can use just the name of the class, not the full um, full namespace path, right? So, and it should be inside of this and it does it every time, but it's quite easy to fix, right? But you have to remember about it, which kind of mm, tells one of the points I'm going to make that you have to learn what errors it does to remember to fix them, okay? So, another example, let's create some class, so I will create a regular helper class, we need a directory there, and then just create, let's call it config php, <coughs> and we will create magento2 generic helper class. And here we go. And again, the PHP is in the wrong spot, so we move it up. Also, the namespace should be above this. So maybe my uh, theory is correct that the use, the imports are created last and they are just put at the top or it somehow interacts with the LSP and and it just, you know, gets messed up. I'm also not entirely sure if we need scope config here like separately because I believe it is it is it is in the context already. But that's not the point. We have very generic and apart from the formatting problems, correct class that we can now work on to create something. And um, yeah, so another example, I will create a function or method because we are like inside a class. So let's do um, create a method that checks if the module is enabled and this module enabled uh, well, it's not very useful because it it thinks uh, that this will be like mm, configuration path and it's not really correct but you can always help a pilot do the right thing. So, for example, like add some uh, constant, like what is the configuration path. So, let's say it thinks this is the configuration path, but let's say it's um, you slash example enabled. Let's say that is the configuration path. We'll delete this method and try again. Mm. Text the module is enabled. So now it is actually correct. So sometimes you need to 
provide some things like also even the classes or I don't know import libraries if you are in some other language if it's not like object oriented you're not inside the class so maybe you, you import some module and then copilot knows that the module is there and then it might it might use it and actually generate a useful code so yeah mm. and oh another thing i might just i'm not sure if it will work but it actually might so let's just get create a public method get current url and it basically suggests correctly oh yeah we have the url builder in abstract helper so it worked just fine sometimes you sometimes copilot can really do something for you if you like i don't know a uh, name a variable or function or method correctly then it will basically guess what it should do in this context and and it just works fine not always but very often like some generic functions it can generate it for you but of course you always need to check it because it can just omit something or like do do it like in most stupid way like with the uh, configuration path but actually actually i am stupid because we cannot check in other way if the module is enabled inside the module itself because if it wasn't enabled in the application the class wouldn't be ever used so <clears throat> that was actually also correct but we didn't provide any you know clues for copilot to infer this uh, correctly so that are some basics but it's also the most common use cases when copilot will be useful although you can also use copilot to replace things in the code i think a lot of lsps can also do also in a lot of scenarios you can just search and replace something but sometimes it is not that simple or might require some rejects and just telling copilot what to change might be simply easier and for this example mm, we need a lot of uh, bad code and here we have weird script php it's just a fragment uh, with like the uh, bad practices let's say as you can see it's also formatted weirdly and in general it's like very uh, really bad practice we just you know include the file here and bootstrap the application and do things but okay this is something you might see you might have to work with and you might want to fix something in that right so one thing right off the bat mm, okay wait a moment i will also like do some changes that I will want Copilot to fix first because I forgot about it. Mm. Okay, I think it's. Let's do it here also. Okay, so basically uh, in PHP, when we want to refer to the class name, of course we can just do this yeah so like a string but we can also do this so we use the class path and use like a class constant that returns the name of the class and it is like way better practice we would want all of these classes to be used like this to be mm, 
let's say cold li like this and also in this scenario we can we can as well just import all these classes so we don't have to put the full path here but well but you know yeah, I mean it's few lines we could just do it by hand but but imagine that the file is way longer and it has way more of or of these things of this you know strings you want to change to this constant for for each of of, of these classes and no it can be a little hmm, tedious to do it by hand so let's tell copilot to do it mm. class instead of string class names and here we go it even imported the classes as I mentioned and we only use just the, the imported class name and the class constant to get the class name but of course the uses are okay it wants us to accept every like okay so we accepted the changes they are done and of course the uses are put in the wrong place again so we have to move the php up so there are some unneeded spaces and yeah it also fixed the code formatting i wanted to make it like another uh, example that it can also just reformat your code of course there are other tools that can do it but the pilot also can do it if you need it or if you don't have this setup correctly like you came to some language you have basically you know some basic lsp installed nothing else no uh, like uh, some linter formatter whatever but you have copilot and it can just do such tasks for you if you need it so another thing we have some of the uh, names here of the the variable names in snake case some other in camel case also for some reason some are in the i don't even remember how this case is named, named pascal case whatever so let's tell copilot and of course i'm also as you can see i'm selecting all the code because you know, I want this code to be changed, right? And let's tell pilot to change snake snake case to camel case. And yeah, it fixed it. And again, it broke this again so it's a little annoying but but yeah and also it isn't like easy task to do by with uh, search and replace like this changing to from snake case to camel case and also some of these variables had the uh, no yeah the first letter also like capital and copilot just went through it and fixed everything and so that's fine and it it asks us to accept like every code section it it changed so we can actually like review what it, what it have done of course we don't like it maybe i could just uh, not accept it it, but I, I didn't remember that it will ask for every section because it's changed this section and the others. I don't know why would it even change. 
I actually could just not select this fragment and it would work fine, I guess. So yeah, these things are kind of basics and quite possible to achieve with other tools. But what I want, wanted to show you is that Copilot is just a very versatile tool and it might be used to replace some other tools in cases where they might be just more tedious to use. Doing a simple search and replace is obviously faster and easier, unless it isn't in a given situation. So, is it worth it? In general, I think Copilot or any equivalent AI tool might be very useful mainly in making some tedious task, tasks less tedious. When it comes to straight up generating code, it can be hit or miss, and when starting working with it, it can be really annoying. I mean, it is quite annoying a lot of times even after working with it for a while, but it can actually help create code faster or without some, as I mentioned, annoying parts. Is it perfect? Of course not. Should you try it? Well, I think yes. In the future I will also look up uh, and maybe suggest some free and open source maybe alternatives provided they will actually work because I, I already have tested in the past some uh, Emacs package for Olama and uh, it didn't really do the things that Copilot does but we'll see, we'll see there is code GPT which is quite promising and I will for sure test it and if it's worthwhile I will make a video about it or maybe even switch to it it would be actually really cool if I could just have a free tool instead of copilot doing these things but we will see so I was showing all of this in VS Code but there's an official plugin for Vim and NeoVim, there is a package for Emacs, so suit yourself or not, but you might want to at least get to know it as AI is creeping in everywhere, so you might as well learn how to use it. So that will be it for this video, thank you for watching, leave a like, subscribe, maybe leave a comment and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.